Hello everyone. Welcome to this latest video of the Field Service Lightning series. And I am your FSL SME expert here at Valley Hub, and I'll be guiding you hands-on for this particular series. So the agenda for today's video is service report and mobile app. I'll be telling you what a service report is and how to create a service report and a mobile app. I'll be giving you a short tour of the FSL mobile app. So let's get started with the service report. So what exactly is a service report? Well, in field service, a service report summarizes a work order or a service appointment that is done by your particular service resource in a PDF format that your customers and your team members will sign. So that's basically what a service report is. A service report usually follows a template. A standard template is always provided by the Salesforce only and FSL software. And if you want to create a custom template, well, that can change from company to company. That's also very easily done. The only user permission that is needed to create a service report template is customize application and to create the edit service report template. These are the two user permissions that are needed to help customize the service report application, basically. So now we will move on to our org and see how to create a service report. So as you can see, I'm in my org right here. I've opened my setup first. So in this setup, what you will do is you'll come here to the quick find box and you'll type service reporting report you'll see service report templates open up click on service report templates the service report template as you can see i've got three templates which are currently active out of them the standard template is an automated process that is provided by fsl two has been two has been created by me i'll create a new one just for easy understanding so i press on new right here you can give a template name. I'll give template two. Let's call it template two. Now the existing template is the one that I want to clone. So this is the template that we will clone to follow the particular format, okay? Like I said, every template is given a, has a format, right? So in this existing template, you have to select a template so that you can clone it. So for now, I'll be going with the standard template that is provided by FSL and Cell. And I'll be creating a template based on that. Then I will further customize it with my own actions. Click on save right here. And the layout page will open. Now, so once the layout page opens, first you have to make sure that the related templates area in here, you are correcting which, which kind of template you want. So what is this related template? Well, this related template area lets you know where exactly the template that you're creating here will be most visible. Okay. So if you want a template for service appointment for work order, then that's the area that you can click in. For now, I want a work order type template, okay? So I'll click on work order. So I want my template to be valid in the work order area. So when I go to work orders right here in here, I can see this template. So I'll click on work orders. And in work order, now as you can see, this is the work order sample area. So this is how my template looks like right now. A service report with a header, there's the body, with all the details, I've got work order line items, and I've got a footer. So what I'll do is I'll edit the header here, the header section. I'll add a text and image field in the header right here. And as you can see, this opens up automatically. Let me just scroll down a bit. Yes. So let's type something. In italics, I'll type Salesforce. Template. I want it in bold and underlined also. This is just for fun, just as an example. Let's press enter and let's say I want to upload an image right here. So click on image and you get an option to choose a file. So click on choose file and you can choose file from here only. So I'll choose an image that I had saved long time back. Let's see if I have any applicable image. There you go. So I have a new logo for Salesforce. I'll click on that. And once it is loaded right here, I click on insert. So once we click on insert, the logo will load by itself. As you can see, the logo has loaded. Now we'll click OK. I'll decrease this one just for once. Now we can go to the header area and we can see that it has already been saved. Hold up. There we go. As you can see in the Salesforce 
header area, the Salesforce template that we just wrote, and the Salesforce logo that we just wrote, uploaded. So now that that has been done, I'll save the service report template. You can also add other things if you want, like case, business hours, asset warranty, and all of that, line items, location, maintenance plans. You can add them here if you want. I'm not adding anything for now since this is just an example. So I'll save it, click on save. Now once the service report template has been saved, you always have to remember to activate the service report template. So once it opens up here, as you can see, there is the activate option right here in template two, which we just created. So click on activate and it will be activated. And as you can see right now, it has been activated. So now what we'll do is we'll move on to our org in the field service app. I will refresh the field service app once once so that my service report template gets loaded. Now we go to our work order section. In work orders, I select a work order. Let's say I select the first work order, AC repair. Now in AC repair here, I want to generate a service report. As you can see, there is no service report generated yet since we haven't selected, created anything, I mean. So what we do is we move into the right hand corner right here, there is a button downwards add a button, we click on it and you see a create service report option will come. Click on the create service report option and you get a template. You get this option to choose a template. And as you can see, the standard template, new report template one, template two, I'm choosing template two since we just created this. And then you click on create PDF. Now, once you click on that, you'll get a service report preview so that you get to see what your service report will look like first of all. And as you can see right here, the image that we just uploaded, the name that we just wrote, the service report template and everything. So this is basically what your template will look like. Okay, so this is the service report template that we just prepared. Now you click on create service report. Once you click on that, this service report will be created. As you can see, the PDF was saved successfully and it's right here, the service report template. So you can check it. Once, click on it and see, this is the PDF basically. Now, if you want the PDF to be immediately sent as soon as it has been created, then as you could, add, you could have seen, right? There was an option right next to the create PDF. There was another option called create and send it to the customer. So like that was the option that you would have selected had there been an email for the customer attached with this particular work order. Then this service report, one, once created, would automatically go to the customer. Okay, so that's basically how it works. The customer, the service resource, and the admin, all of them will be receiving an email saying that the service report has been sent to them. So that's how a service report is generally created. Now you can also edit many features like I told you, it's highly customizable. As I showed you in the layout section, you can customize whatever feature you want to add or you want to remove. It really depends on you. So this is basically a service report. And this is how a service report is created. Now you can also create a service report via the FSL mobile app, which we will come to that later on, later on once I show you the FSL mobile app code. So let's get started with the FSL mobile app. So service report is done here. Now we will go to the FSL mobile app. So the field service mobile app is applicable for both iOS and Android. And it's a mobile app for a service resource actually. It has online features and I'm pretty sure if you have like watch the overview video of mine at the very first, I had discussed about the FSL mobile app there. So like the FSL mobile app is a very simple, easy to use instrument and it mostly helps the service resource to get knowledge about that particular work order, what products are required, what the details are, what you need to do and all of that. And the FSL mobile app also helps the service report service resource to keep updating the admin on their particular work that they're doing. So what they're doing so that the admin can stay updated, you know? So that's the mobile app. Now, since I cannot just show you how in the mobile, I have already pre-recorded the mobile app. So I'll play the recording here and I'll show it to you part by part. So let me just set that up. So this is basically how the app looks like, okay? So as you can see, everything in these apps area, this is the schedule, inventory, notification, the profile area. That's the schedule right here. And this is the inventory. This is the notifications area. That's the profile area of the of that particular service resource. So if we move forward right here, as you can see, I have clicked on profile. This is my name and these are my absence times. Like I took vacation here. I took vacation on February 8th. I took vacation on February 13th as a service resource, I mean. 
from 12 to 12 30 i was unavailable in these two days that's my profile this will show my absences okay now we move forward we move forward to the scheduling inventory and all of these so it's actually a very easy thing that helps all service resources work this is the schedule area that will contain all the work that you have to do in one particular day as you can see i already have a service appointment booked here from 9 a.m to 9 30 a.m now all the service appointments will be lifted listed here one by one so that's one thing now moving on to the inventory area now in this inventory area you will find multitude of things okay so in this inventory area i'll play it back one more time so in this inventory area you will find three different options one is a product item, another is a product request, and finally we have product transfer. So the product item is the one that, if you have watched my previous video, I have already told you what a product item is. The junction object between a product and a location. So basically, the, in the inventory, the items that are contained in the inventory, that's the product item. So as you can see right here, we have got two product items, nails and cables, and 400 and 200 each are left here. Okay, so this is the product item. Now we move on to the product requests. In product requests, well, in our previous video also, once again, I have shared to you what a product request is. I'll give you a short brief introduction right now. So if a service appointment requests some kind of product that is required to fulfill that particular service appointment from the admin or the agent or whoever is responsible for your org, that is basically a product request. You can create product requests. Service resources can create product requests here from this actions area. They can create a product request and then, and the admin can sanction that particular product for work. The product transfer is basically any product that has been transferred by the admin to the service resource, by the admin agent. I keep calling them admin because, well, I am an admin and I just get a bit confused. So the product transfers, the agent who has transferred to the, the product to the service resource, that is the product transfer and that will appear in the product transfer area. As you can see in the product item, if you click on the product item, whatever product item is there, you click on it, the details will appear, the product name, the location, the quantity, then each unit of measure, the serial number, it was created by who and when it was created, when it was modified and all of it will appear in this place. We'll also have written the related list, we'll also have different options like product item history, product item transactions, and all of that, okay? I'll replay this right here. So product item transactions, video and order line items, product transfers, any serialized products, all of these will be shown in the related list. This is basically exactly what you will be seeing in the org only, okay? But in a more mobile friendly format. That's basically what the FSL mobile app does. It makes it extremely easy for a service resource to use the org, especially in offline, because internet connectivity is not free everywhere, right? So that's what it is. As you can see here in the product item transactions, you can see two, item, two items have been transacted. So 500 was replenished and 100 was consumed, as you can see. So this is the item transaction that will be shown here, okay? Now we move forward to the other features. So this is the inventory area that I've already shown to you. Now coming to the scheduling, now we will create a service report from scheduling. So what we can do here is refresh the schedule and this is the action area. As I was showing to you, I just you can just pull it up from here. This is the action area for scheduling. This is the option where you can get a product. This is the option where you can create a product request. You can create a new event. You can create a new task. You can create new contacts, opportunities, and cases or leads and etc. This is the action area basically. Now in here, in the calendar symbol, you can see right here, you can change the product, uh, the schedule dates basically for the service resource. As you can see, it's 13th of February right here. So you can change it to any date that you want. The calendar basically, I am changing it to 8th. And as you can see, I had three different service appointments on 8th of February. So this is how the scheduling area works. Now, once we have finished the scheduling area, we will create a service, uh, service report. As I was telling you, service report can be created via phones also. So we will do that. So what we do is we click on that particular service appointment, okay? Once we click on that particular service appointment, this entire field opens up. So you can see the overview, you can see products, details, related list, then the feed and everything. So as you can see, one old service report has already been generated. We'll create a new, another new service report. So we go to the product area first. Let me give you an overview. 
as you can see in the products area the, the products consumed is visible I, I have consumed 100 nails so that is given there in the details list you can see the work order number the service territory the work type the owner the status and all of that the scheduling priority the high account contacts and all of that then we will come to the related list right here and we will create a service report as you can see in the related list exactly as it is presented to org service report product requests required consumed work order line items service appointments etc all of these are visible this is the feed area and in the feed area all the posts that have been made by the service resource or any other chatter feed who has been updated so all of these will be available here as you can see the service resource has created a post about the product required about the product that has been consumed this is the chatter feed area you can also create new posts as you can see as you can click on that new post button right here and i've created a new post here let's say we create a new post let's create a new post and you click on this post right here and a new post will have been created see let's create a new post it's just that easy so now we move on to the related list area and we create a service report we generate a service report so what do we do for that well in the service reports as you can see there is no service report right here so we click on the actions you drag it from up here there is the action button at the button at the uh, very bottom you drag it up and you get the option create a service report so you click on that so once you click on that as you can see this is the service report preview of the old service report that had already been generated you can create a new one as i am creating this one click on it and you can first of all get the preview of the service report as you can see right here this is the preview the account and contact information the appointment information the work details and all of that you just saw in the org how a preview appears right before a service report is created the phone also shows you a preview of what your service report would look like for you creating it so you do that so once you go back you'll have to give a digital signature of yours and that's the option here the remaining digital signature this is the area where you have to click on this get a default digital signature part and you have to sign your own signature so that like i said a service report is signed by both the service resource and the customer right so this is the area where the service resource signs the service report. So you click on it. And once you click on it, click on done here. And this is the service resource and sign and confirm. So this is where you give your signature. You give your name. The name of my service resource is Vinita. And as you can see, I'm, you can sign it by hand on your phone only, like I said. Just click on save. And then finally click on done. And once the digital signature is collected, Click on that service report and it would be generated. So as you come to the overview right here, a service report has been created as you can see. Click on that and you see right here, a service report has been created. Open that service report and there you go. See the signature that I just did of Vinita. And this is basically the service report. The service report contains all details like accounts, contacts, address, appointment number, work details, start date, end date and all of that. So this is basically the service report that you just created. So overall, this is what a service report is. And this is actually most of the features that FSL mobile app contains. There's nothing else really. So you can create a service report. You can log in a product request. You can create new tasks. You can create new leads, create new contacts, opportunities. You can also edit your own profile in here. All you need is the FSL mobile permission from the permission set user. Assign that to your user and you're set to go. FSL mobile is actually one of the most easiest ways to like use FSL and it's also extremely helpful to the resources. So that's an FSL mobile app. So in today's video, we discussed about service reports and the mobile app. If you've got any doubt, you can ask your questions in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. And for now, I'll meet you in the next video. Bye bye.